So hi everyone. In this video, we're going to discuss an example of uh, long run production and we'll go through the uh, derivations uh, to try and get uh, the functions we're trying to look for. So um, let's say a firm has a production function which is given by Q, okay, which is a level of output equal to 4L raised to 0.25 uh, times k raised to 0.25 for all positive values of k and l. So we restrict the domain to strictly positive values of our inputs, which is labor and capital. So the first uh, problem we're going to be dealt with is uh, we want to find the firm's marginal product of labor and marginal product of capital. And the way we do that, again, it's just by getting okay, a first order partial derivative with respect to the particular input. So if it's marginal product of labor, that's partial of Q with respect to L. And what we get is, uh, so that's going to be 4 times bring down the exponent of L, 0.25, L raised to uh, negative 0 0.75 times K raised to 0 0.25. Okay. And what will happen is, 0.25 times 4, that's just equal to 1. So this cancels out. And we're going to be left with k raised to 0 0.25 over l raised to 0 0.75. And that's mpl. Okay. Well, what we did to make the exponent of l positive was just to bring it down to the denominator. Similarly, we can get marginal product of capital, which is equal to the um, derivative of q with respect to k. This is equal to 4 times 0 0.25, that's the exponent of capital, L 0 0.25, K raised to negative 0 0.75. Okay. And we're going to be left with something very similar. We get MPK is equal to uh, L 0 0.25 over K raised to 0 0.75. Okay. And uh, uh, note uh, that these are our marginal product of labor and capital functions. Now, uh, the question also asks uh, to verify that the production function exhibits diminishing marginal productivity of labor and capital. So uh, to verify that, okay, so to verify, um, to verify diminishing marginal uh, productivity of labor and capital, became, so that's uh, what we do is we take the derivative, okay, we take the partial derivative of the marginal product functions with respect to the input again. Or that's just the second order derivative of the production function with respect to each input. So if you want to prove diminishing marginal product of labor, we derive the production function with respect to labor twice. And what we'll find is that uh, if we derive this, all we're going to get is, uh, so again, this is equal to k raised to 0 0.25. L raised to negative 0 0.75. So we're going to be left with negative 0 0.75 mm. K 0 0.25 times uh, times L raised to uh, negative 1.75 or negative 0 0.75 okay, K 0 0.25 over L 1.75. And you note for all values k greater than 0 and l greater than 0, okay, this derivative is negative, which implies that uh, diminishing marginal product of uh, labor. So diminishing marginal productivity of labor. We can do the same for capital. So that's partial of mpk with respect to k or second order uh, derivative of the uh, function, of the production function with respect to k. And we get negative 0 0.75 uh, L, okay, 0 0.25 over K, 1.75. And that again is less than 0 for all values K greater than 0 and L greater than 0. So similar procedure. And now we see that uh, this implies that there is diminishing marginal uh, productivity of labor and capital. So what does that mean? So it implies that as for example, diminishing marginal product of labor, as the firm uses more labor, holding capital constant, okay, the marginal productivity of labor decreases. And the same is true for capital. So that's the first part. Okay, let's now go to the second part. Okay. So the second part is 
find the derivative that describes the slope of a typical isoquant, and that's uh, we know from the discussion that that's dk over dl along the same isoquant. So we hold q uh, constant. So dq is equal to zero. So q is constant, and we know its mathematical form is just negative mpl over mpk. And when we already computed for MPL and MPK before, so this is going to be negative uh, K0.25 over L0.75 over okay, L0.25 over K0.75. Uh, what you can do is, uh, to make it easier, it can be multiplication. So since the denominator is a fraction, we take the reciprocal. So we get... Uh, negative um, k 0 0.25 over l 0 0.75 times uh, uh, this is going to be um, l 0 0.25 over k 0 0.25 okay zero, oh, sorry this is uh, uh, l this is uh, this is going to be uh, k 0 0.75 rather this is 25 and we're going to be left with negative k over L. Because 0 0.25 plus 0 0.75, that's equal to 1. 0 0.75 plus 0 0.25, that's also equal to 1. And uh, clearly, okay, we know that the slope of the isoquant is downward sloping. And since dk over dl, dq equal to 0, so that's the slope, is negative k over L. It's negative, so we know that k and L are strictly positive. Two positives times a negative. Uh, two positives divided by each other times a negative. Um, that's a negative for all values k l greater than zero. Therefore, the slope of a typical isoquant is downward sloping. Okay. Next question: We are asked to find the marginal rate of technical substitution between labor and capital. So that's MRT SLK. Then we need to verify. Okay, that the firm's production function exhibits diminishing marginal rate of technical substitution as it uses more labor to produce the same output along the same isoquant. So we know that, okay, from part two, okay, from number two, we know that dk over dl along the same isoquant is equal to negative k over l, negative k over l. And uh, by definition, okay, MRTS, Okay, that's just equal to the negative, okay, the negative of the slope. Okay, so that's, uh, let me fix this, that's the negative of dk over dl, dq equal to zero. So this is essentially, okay, the negative of negative k over l, which is just k over l. And that's your MRTS, uh, okay, that's your marginal rate of technical substitution. Now, to prove that the firm's reduction function exhibits diminishing marginal rate of technical substitution as it uses more labor, okay, we can take the derivative of MRTS, okay, LK, with respect to L, okay, so that's partial, okay, sorry, partial with respect to L, and that's just going to be equal to, since this is uh, K over L, okay, this is just, uh, what, uh, this is just going to be, equal to, uh, if we solve it mathematically, okay, this is going to be equal to negative 2k all over l squared, which is less than 0 for all values k greater than 0 and l greater than 0. So application of some rules, and uh, that should be it. Okay, that should be it. Uh, moving on, okay, so that proves diminishing marginal rate of substitution what we can do now is uh what we can do is next for the next number we're going to prove okay that the production function exhibits increasing decreasing or constant returns to scale so again we're given with the function okay for l 0 0.25 k raised to 0 0.25 and that's our production function it's flk okay so we let t be greater than one be the proportion change portion change in both okay l and k so if you do this f okay tl tk that's going to be equal to so substituting it we have tl raised to 0 0.25 
TK 0 0.25. Okay. Then simplifying it, we have 4 T 0 0.25, L 0 0.25, T 0 0.25, K 0 0.25. Further simplifying it, we have two t's here. That exponent will be um, t raised to 0 0.5, l 0 0.25, k 0 0.25. Or that's just going to be equal to t raised to 0 0.5 times the original production function. Okay. And since, okay, since okay, the degree of homogeneity, okay, h, uh, is equal to 0 0.5, the production function function uh, exhibits okay it since it's less than one okay it will exhibit uh, decreasing returns to scale okay. so that's decreasing returns to scale scale so what does that mean specifically if both labor and capital increase by the same proportion, which is some proportion greater than one, then the amount that output increases by that proportion. So remember, the amount that the output grew is just t raised to 0 0.5, which is less than t raised to one, which is your initial proportion. Therefore, uh, the, the output will, less than, uh, will be less than the increase in the inputs. So that's, uh, that's the rationale as to why it displays decreasing returns to scale. And uh, last, okay, find and describe the elasticity of substitution. Actually, this is pretty straightforward, right? Uh, if you notice, okay, this is... Uh, so the elasticity of substitution, again, measures the curvature of the isoquant. Okay, this is going to be the derivative of your capital labor ratio with respect to... MRTS LK times MRTS LK over K over L. Okay. But what you notice is that uh, MRTS LK, we saw for that earlier, and that's just equal to K over L. Okay. So that implies that um, we can do some very easy simplifying here, and that this is equal to K over L. Okay. So this cancels out. And it's, we're going to be reduced to D, this one, D, K over L, over, we know MRT as LK here, that's just K over L, okay? So uh, what's the derivative of itself? So we're deriving K over L with respect to itself. So that derivative is going to be equal to 1. Therefore, the elasticity of substitution is equal to 1. Uh, and so it's constant 1 for all values of L. And, K. and that's a sample problem for long-run production.